good evening, members, and I'm honored to be speaking in this debate tonight. So when I first became aware that I'd be speaking on this motion, I felt uncomfortable, if not slightly torn. Anyone who knows me knows I'm quite liberal in my values. I'm quite happy for people to live their lives as they wish, as long as they don't cause harm to others. I don't happen to do much dilly and dallying of the hookup kind myself, though. That says more about the state of my dating apps, I think, than it does anything else. There is still societal stigma about talking about issues like sex and relationships, even though it's a core part of many lives. As they say, love is the meaning of life, but for some reason it isn't spoken about to the same extent as other issues, like getting a mortgage or housing. Education, sex education in year six was mainly identifying body parts on a whiteboard and a random male teacher sitting you down to explain how to use protection rather than anything actually meaningful. We just don't talk about sex in society, and that's just not okay. Yes, it may make people feel uncomfortable at points. Yes, at points, maybe we can't keep a straight face talking about it. And no doubt we all had that teacher in year eight who took far too much joy in placing a condom on a banana. But the fact we're having this debate is important in itself, and at least we're beginning to debate these issues in open spaces. So in focusing on the issue of hookup culture, what I have to say is focus on people, emotions, and experiences, but certainly it's not a form of judgment. Individuals should live their lives as they wish, and this motion is not condemning any individual way of life, merely reflecting on whether the benefits of hookup culture on a mass scale are all they're cracked up to be. I plan to argue that hookup culture is prioritizing short-term gratification over long-term commitment, that hookup culture can make people feel commodified, and that hookup culture is not something that everybody feels equally able to participate in. But first, it falls upon me to introduce the speakers for the opposition. So first up is Matthew Dick, our secretary, and the other presidential candidate in our forthcoming election. So when preparing this speech, I thought I'd do some research and consult that place for meaningful connection. Hinge. Sources tell me that some of Matthew's pickup lines include asking for travel advice for a way to your heart, and his belief <laughs> that... <laughs> and also his belief that hedgehogs are rats with spikes on, and therefore rats are a social construct. I wonder how successful Hinge is going for him. Our second speaker is India Yazabel, who's an intersectional feminist campaigner. India's worked on many incredible campaigns, including co-founding the Speak Up Space and campaigning for Our Streets Now, among others. Her work is admirable, and I'm not in a rush to make a joke about this important work. I did note, though, that in her Instagram bio, she describes herself as an occasional educator with a strawberry emoji, so I'll let you, the members, decide tonight if she's providing education in her speech. The third speaker in opposition is Bo Boca Batesa, an elected member of the Secretary's Committee at Lincoln College, and one of the whole, most wholesome members of committee, in my opinion. Bo is also known as a welfare rep and is known for her kindness on committee and is an uber-efficient secretary to the union's largest committee, so I look forward to hearing their thoughts this evening. And our final speaker is Hannah Edwards, an elected member of Standing Committee, also from Lincoln College. I'm not quite sure if Lincoln's taking a block position on hookup culture this evening. Maybe they're sort of throwing their weight around now they have their first Prime Minister in a win for Oxford College diversity. But as a seasoned debater and coach, odds are she will have a well thought out speech which I'll be compelling to many of you. However, to borrow from Han Solo, never tell me the odds. These are your guests, Mr Acting President, and they are most welcome. So, the first point that I want to make this evening is that hookup culture prioritizes short-term gratification over long-term commitment. What feels good in the short term may not be the best decision in the longer term. I certainly can't speak on behalf of the House about individuals' emotional experience. The idea of doing what feels great today without thinking about the future feels like short-termism which is not conducive to happiness. Maybe today it feels great with someone you find attractive, but what if it could be more? While risking and fulfilling your desires may feel like a certain enough and taking back your autonomy, do we not all at some point just crave stability and warmth? Some may say variety is the spice of life, but given my order at Nando's is a lemon and herd chicken, maybe I'm just not keen on spice. And do you not think also that short-termism is harmful to society? I'm very keen to steer clear of arguments about so-called traditional values. To me, these arguments are just plain stale, irrelevant in today's society, and obviously they enforce harmful tropes which, are, in my opinion, are just simply indefensible. It's not what I'm here to argue tonight. However, the detrimental impacts of short-termism in other spaces is simply undeniable. Whether it be fake news, a lack of public trust, or the inability to consume anything more than a stream of TikToks, we have to be trapped in an endless pursuit of time efficiency. 
This has not been great for fostering good mental health and blinds us to so much of the good in this world. The joy of a book is not how long it takes to read, of course, but the slow process of learning about ourselves as we connect with the characters and the world the author has painted. As many in this room will be acutely aware, even in the world of hookups, quicker very rarely means better. So hookup culture, in my opinion, can equate love with sexual gratification, which entirely misplaces the differences between love and attraction. It is possible to love somebody without being attracted to them. Equally, it's possible to, is it also equally possible to be attracted to somebody without loving them, and I think that's just okay. Some people will feel more of one emotion than another, and equally, that is also okay. Hookup culture, to me at least, feels like the dominance, though, of attraction over love, and it feeds more into some of our animalistic instincts. There's nothing wrong with being attracted to somebody, but we always need to start first from respect. Hookup culture at best may be a very respectful exchange, but I fear the average hookup is only focused on self-interest over how you feel about the other person. This undoubtedly leads to a culture of public objectification, where the bodies of women in particular are subject to the male gaze for no other reason than the normalization of women as a point of sexual desire. It's only not my place to stand here and determine the parameters of female liberation, but equally, I cannot ignore the impact that hookup culture has had in the reduction of persons as nothing more than just bodies. In a society driven by free markets and individualism, hookup culture is just, in my opinion, a natural consequence of making human interactions all the more transactional, creating a coldness about issues of intimacy and love. The breaking down of societal ties has robbed us of communities that loved us, cared for us, and fought for us in our times of need. Instead, what has filled the void is an unprecedented loneliness and a lack of social purpose. It makes life all the more about I rather than we. We over them, sexual interests over the public good. Hookup culture is not just one part of the societal shift towards the normalization of a socially Darwinist, everyone for themselves mentality. The final point I want to briefly make is to reflect on the fact that not everyone can fully participate in hookup culture. As somebody with a hidden disability, most of the time I can probably be seen as somebody who appears absolutely fine. And at those points I can participate in society just the same as anybody else. However, when my disability starts to play up and I gain a limp or I'm unable to climb the stairs, I'm hardly a figure of attraction. I'm not looking for pity of anybody in this chamber, but I suspect that everything in the long run is going to be okay. However, my disability is just one example of the many ways that both men and women find it an uphill battle to conform to the body ideas that hookup culture perpetuates for them. My story of inadequacy resonates with many people in this room precisely because so many of us end up fixating on how we present ourselves to the world. But we need to forget this. Also, we are all great, and social expectations of hookup culture should be damned. So, to summarize my arguments very briefly, I always want to start from a place of respect, and I fear the average hookup is not built upon this premise. The human psyche, to me, craves stability over chaos. The long term good is usually better than short term wins, and hookup culture can be mostly challenging. Love and attraction are very different emotions that we need to separate out. Hookup culture, in some respects, feels like the next stage of a neoliberal culture sweeping our society, a pervasive form of individualism. As someone myself with a disability, I'm not sure that everyone feels they can equally participate in hookup culture. But if you think you've heard enough, I'd like to remind members that while the opposition is speaking, the bar remains open. Thank you so much. <laughs>